What's going on guys and welcome back to Footy with an Edge. Man United have just lost 1-0 to Newcastle away from home in what was a dismal, heartless, and powerless performance. And as much as this makes me sound like one of the clueless pundits that you see on Sky or BBC, we were very slow in moving the ball and we didn't create any chances going forward. And we were very slow in getting to second balls and didn't defend like we wanted to win the game. And when you see performances like these, you naturally start to question the mindset and the philosophy of your coaching staff. What exactly is Eric Ten Hag trying to achieve with this team? How exactly are we trying to win games? Of course, when Ten Hag was asked this question at the beginning of the season, he said that we want to put in a more dynamic and aggressive performance this season. We want to surprise by playing with speed and a very good team spirit. And ultimately, we want to be the best transition team in the world. Well, 14 games into the Premier League season, it is painfully obvious that we're not putting in dynamic or aggressive performances we're not playing with speed or with a good team spirit, and we're definitely not the best transition team in the world. So in this video, we're going to examine exactly what's going wrong with Eric Ten Hag's system and why Man United are failing miserably at achieving the goal set out by our Dutch manager at the start of the season. Now, there are a lot of things that went wrong in that game, but I've picked out a few clips for you guys that will highlight a lot of the issues that United have been having this season. And we're going to start with a Newcastle counterattack in the second half, where Newcastle are attacking with five men, as you can see here, and United are defending with six, including the back line and the double pivot. As we play along, you can see that Trippier is passing it off to Isaac on the right wing, and he's moving to overlap him on the right-hand side as well. And we're going to pause it right here and look at a few things because we have a lot to break down here. First, look at how overloaded Newcastle's right flank is. It's effectively a 4v3 for United unless Maguire decides to vacate his center back spot and move over to the right side to help against these four players. But that's never really a good idea because then it opens up the middle of the pitch which is far more dangerous for United. And this particular overload on the right flank for Newcastle is no surprise because everyone knows that everything in terms of build up and creativity goes through Kieran Trippier who obviously plays at the right back spot. The second thing I want you guys to notice is how open Newcastle's left hand side is because of the overload on the right-hand side. It was pretty much just Anthony Gordon and Livermento that were on this side with Joel Linton and Guimaraes actually playing far more centrally than they were on the left-hand side. So naturally, you would expect one of Menu or Bruno to be helping out towards United's left, which is Newcastle's right, because we can avoid the overloads hurting us so much. But Obviously, in this play, we're not doing that. As we play along, we see Isaac keeps dribbling with the ball forward, and he slows down right here to try to cut back. And at that same time, we see Almiron overlapping him on the outside again. And we have this situation right here, where Dallow's forced to play against Trippier and Almiron, and Garnacho's too slow to track back Almiron, which means there's another 3v2 situation, or basically an overload situation on Newcastle's right. And this situation happened time and again this game because there was always a free man for Newcastle in the most crucial part of their buildup, and this was causing United issues all game. As Isaac passes the ball and moves to a central area, we see Garnacho now dropping back to track back against Miley and the other two players on the right hand side. But now you also see Kabi Menu moving towards the right to defend against Miley. And now United have the opposite problem that we just had. We are 4v3 on the right-hand side now, but that leaves so much space for Guimaraes and Joe Linden to exploit through the middle. And that is more dangerous than having space on the flanks. And you might be thinking, you had an issue with us having not enough defenders on the right, and now you're complaining about too many defenders on the right. Here's the thing. It's very important for a team to maintain their defensive shape when the other team has the ball. You counteract overloads in areas of the pitch by making your team shape more compact and moving the entire team towards that overload side. So in this situation, you should have Bruno Fernandez being more tied to Bruno Guimaraes in the midfield, and you should have Anthony and Juan Bissaka be tighter towards the edge of this box over here so that our team shape is compact. And if the other team wants to exploit us, they have to go around us, which gives us more time to adjust to that particular situation. Now we're going to skip about 10 seconds in game time to get to this point where 
Bruno Guimaraes has the ball in midfield and he's about to play it out to Livermento. As he's about to do that, pay attention to Kopi Menu and McTominay's movements in midfield that, that are being tracked here. Look at how close they are to almost the right-hand side of Newcastle's attack, despite the ball actually being on the left-hand side now. And United have a 2v2 on the side. The gaps here are just immense. As Livermento passes it out to Gordon ahead of him, we're going to pause it right here again and make some observations about United's shape in this position, right? We're going to pause right here. Livermento is just trying to give the ball to Gordon and make a simple overlap, much like Trippier and Almiron were doing on the right-hand side in the previous clip we saw. But look at how much space that Juan Bissaka and Antony are left to cover by themselves over here in behind Juan Bissaka. And look at how much space there is between Maguire and Juan Bissaka the right center back and the right back. This is an acre of space on the football pitch. So this basically means if Joe Linton or Kimuraish are anywhere near the edge of the box in the central or left of central area, they can do whatever they want because Maguire is left for dead and these three can play give and goes and exploit as much space as they want. But we haven't even gotten to my biggest problem with United's defensive shape yet, because look at where Scott McTominay is. He started the game as the right-sided CDM, and he is basically in a central CDM position right in between the two center backs right now. Look at how Mainu, who started as the left CDM, is exactly where he's supposed to be, in between the left back and the left center back. Whereas McTominay should be right over here, but he's way out of position. And don't tell me that he's marking someone there because there is no one near McTominay right now. So as Livermento gets the ball back from Gordon, when we play this along, you'll see that Livermento gets the ball and he tries to put in a cross. And as we pause it right there, look at how much space is between the four right-sided players in United's team. We have Juan Bissaka, Anthony Maguire, and McTominay here. This is just too much space. We can't, this is not how you either coach defenses or execute on that coaching. So this is bad all around. Next, we're going to see a bit more of the defensive madness from this game. With this clip from the first half, starting with Almiron on the ball on the right wing, and Lewis Miley is trying to underlap him towards the byline by moving in this direction. As we play along, you see Miley is making his run, and Almiron uses that run as a decoy to cut inside and pass it to Joe Linton on the inside, who actually finds himself in acres of space at the edge of the box because of the decoy run by Miley. By the time Joe Linton actually receives the ball, United seem to be back in their defensive shape, so Joe Linton's actually forced to play it out to Trippier on the right. And as we pause it here, look at how many men United have in a good, tight, and narrow defensive shape. We have nine players, everybody except for the striker, that's basically at the edge of the box. So we're we're in good shape to basically take whatever Newcastle has to throw at us. But of course, as we play along, all it takes is a simple pass from Kieran Trippier in between Garnacho and Dallo to just ruin our defensive shape entirely because Joe Linton gets free pretty much towards the byline. Looks like nobody has tracked Almiron's run either because as soon as Joe Linton gets the ball in this space, it's very easy cutback for him towards Almiron. And of course, that's exactly what happens. Joe Linton gets towards the byline, cuts it back for Almiron, who has pretty much an open shot on goal. And as we pause it right there, what the hell is actually happening here? <laughs> Almiron on any other day puts that ball past Onana and United are 1-0 down in the first half. In the first 20 minutes actually and based on the chances Newcastle had today they could have easily been two three four goals up already a player like Mo Salah converts that chance a player like Saka probably converts that chance and against a team that's actually putting away their chances we are in big big trouble so why exactly am I bringing up United's defensive frailties what does any of this have to do with Ten Hag's transitional football or his philosophy? Well, a good transition team, forget the best in the world, just a good one, knows how to defend well, soak up the pressure from the other team, and then transition from defense to attack. Likewise, a good transition team needs to be good at transitioning from attacking to defending against opposition counterattacks by making sure they get back into their defensive shape quickly and sniff out the various dangers that the other team might possess. But United have shown us time and time again this season that they cannot defend. They can't defend against counterattacks because our forwards and attacking midfielders don't track back or don't track back quick enough. And they can't defend against slow possession buildup because we keep losing runners from midfield because of a lack of concentration. So how exactly are United supposed to be the best 
transition team in the world when we clearly can't execute 50% of our game plan? Someone make it make sense. In my opinion, the biggest culprits for United conceding 34 goals in 21 games this season are our left and right wingers and the structure of our midfield. Out of Sancho, Anthony, Rashford, Garnacho, Martial, and Palistri, only Anthony and Palistri actually make any defensive efforts. And Palistri doesn't really get minutes in this team, so we can count him out. And Anthony has been out of the team most of the season for obvious reasons. When you take Jaden Sancho out of the team as well because of off-the-pitch issues, we're left with Rashford and Garnacho, like you see here, forced to start pretty much every game, and they're both not known for their defensive contributions. And what absolutely blows my mind is that a youngster like Garnacho, as bad as he is defensively, does way more than Rashford, who is a senior player in this team and making over 350 bags a week. An OBE holder, born in Manchester, who's been at the club since he was eight, can't be bothered to track back or give a damn more than a kid that we bought from Atletico Madrid's youth setup. Just doesn't make sense to me. And you might say that Ten Hag is asking Rashford not to track back, but I'm sorry, that's complete BS. You're telling me that Ten Hag is asking him to let Juan Bissaka get put on toast by Livermento and Gordon all night? I don't buy that. And even if he is asking him to not track back that much, don't you think Rashford should feel the pressure to contribute to the team defensively when he's not doing anything offensively? Seriously, in the first half of that game, Rashford had two or three opportunities to put Juan Bissaka through, to put Garnacho through, and he screwed every single one up. And of course, when he got the ball, he was just running into walls like he does usually anyways. So the wingers not tracking back, I just don't understand it. We can't keep carrying them. Moving on to the structure of our midfield, since Ten Hag has joined the club, he has insisted on playing a lone CDM despite starting in a 4-2-3-1 double pivot system. Most of the time, it's Casemiro as the true CDM, with Eriksen or McTominay or Fred last season as the 8 next to Bruno, who also plays as an 8. And naturally, Eriksen, McTominay or Fred can't handle the same defensive load that Casemiro can, and neither can Bruno because Bruno's our creative force on the offensive side. So that leaves our lone CDM with defensive work or defensive workload of two to three players. And because our wingers don't track back either, that leaves our fullbacks with the defensive load of two to three players. So when you count the striker, the two wingers, and the two eights, we basically have five players in our front line that are doing 50% or less of their defensive work. That leaves our back five to six players to do more defending than they can handle. You look at Dallow, Shaw, Juan Bissaka, and Maguire today. They didn't get a single minute's rest from defending against that Newcastle attack all game. They were constantly overwhelmed, and it's frankly a miracle that United didn't concede five goals today. Newcastle had 22 shots from 2.5 XG. They created four big chances and missed three of them. So yeah, if Ten Hag wants to fix this team and make us the best transition team in the world, we have to start defending as a team as all 11 players on that pitch putting all of their effort into defending. The primary goal must be to soak up pressure and not concede. Then we can talk about scoring goals and how many we want to score and etc etc. It's that simple. So if you're still here, you might rightly be wondering if this is it. Is Ten Hag completely finished? Is there any saving grace for him this season? Well, it turns out that there are many mitigating circumstances for United's performances this season. Starting with injuries, we have Kobe Mainu, Luke Shaw, Martinez, Varane, Casemiro, Eriksen, and Mount all have missed major parts of this campaign. In fact, things were so bad at the back that we had to give Regulon and Evans both one-year deals. And guess what? Both of them got injured too. On top of all this, we have Anthony and Sancho missing major minutes because of off-the-field issues. And when you put all of this together, you actually start feeling bad for Ten Hag. So despite all of the criticisms that I've outlined in this video so far, I'm still not Ten Hag out. 
In fact, I'm very much still behind our manager because I truly believe in his footballing philosophy, his footballing vision. I like how he thinks, I like how he speaks before and after the games, and I think he believes he can turn this football club around. And that self-belief is very important to have as a top manager alongside good tactics and good players who can execute on those tactics. Speaking of good players, several key players in that dressing room have absolutely fallen off a cliff in terms of their form throughout the season. Rashford, Garnacho, Bruno, Casemiro, Anthony, and Varane have all looked 30 to 40% worse than they did last season. And United have lacked any sort of cohesion or togetherness because of this. Games that we were winning one or two nil last season are being lost two three four nil this season and it's and we weren't winning those games because we were playing amazing football last year we were just getting over the line in some of those games instead in those very games we're getting absolutely pummeled this year so to give you guys some good news as we get to the end of this video you can expect united to get better as we get some players back from injury you can Expect to see the likes of Rashford, Bruno, Casemiro, and Anthony to start performing well regularly. And then you'll see United having to defend less because we're doing better offensively. And therefore, we will naturally defend better as well. So overall, with some of these mitigating circumstances going away with time, you'll see United look a lot better and have a better second half of the season than we did the first. Plus, you never know what Sir Jim can bring in terms of improvements as head of football operations. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you agree with? What did you disagree with? Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.